Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I like that. All right, so today we're touching on wellness as resilience. And we're doing this against the backdrop of our profession as practitioners and as leaders within the TVET um, industry, right? Pretty much COVID-19 happened. And when it happened, we experienced a dynamic shift, right? The shift was sudden, unpredictable. It was almost like a meteorite out of the sky just drop and give us a big boof. Yeah? And so we had to kind of figure out, all right, what are we going to do? How are we going to manage and cope in this particular time? But as we were kind of trekking through it, it kind of gives rise to a lot of questions, like what really is happening? Am I going to survive this? Not just on a physical standpoint or from a medical standpoint, but also from a professional standpoint, right? Because people that lose their little job, left, right, and center. And it also brought into question the whole mental capacity of us. Like, all right, am I really strong enough for this? Is this something that I even want to ensure that I get out of? Or can I just wrap up in my little bed, close my eyes, and sing twinkle, twinkle, little stars, and maybe, just maybe, it's going to give me a different kind of aura, right? So there are lots of emotions, a lot of struggles that we all went through, not just as a people, but as a profession, yes? It forced us to think about who we are and think about how we are. How are we mentally? How are we physically? How are we emotionally? How are we spiritually? How are we medically? You understand? Because with all the little underlying things, you now everybody starts wondering if the heart right if the knee right, if, you know, the back are right because you don't want punkums pam pankas, right? So there are a lot of questions that were swirling. Now, one of the things that really kind of takes to us as persons within this particular field is that we were forced to not take time like everybody else to kind of figure it out. We had to be figuring it out along the way because we have to figure it out not just for ourselves and our household but for those whose lives we touch in a particular way so there was no waiting room area there was no um sitting and kind of drafting up a local strategic plan with local crayon and markers and all of that it was more you got to do this now and you got to do it as best as you can, if it is that you want to survive. Now, with the area of TVET, because of the dynamic shift that was happening, what you find is that your industry was also shifting as well. So not just you, and not just your profession, but the industry. So automatically, whole heap of little innovation start to come in. And those of us who are not technologically inclined, the local bangers here and there, just want to know it can call 911 in case of emergency. And all of these things, you have to get things now with chemistry, right? I have to make sure, say, you understand how to pose the chemistry. I have to make sure you know how to click and mute and unmute your mic. Anybody ever went through a tragedy like that? Yeah? Nobody? Oh, so lucky. <laughs> you know, you have to remember how to mute and unmute and what to video. And if you dress half up here so pretty like a dolly, you have to remember saying, I better try to use the bathroom till the horse has ended the meeting, <laughs> right? And if you hear like a little fire thing and go on outside, nobody stop, drop and roll because if you ever rise up, 
then the whole of the nation will see oh my soul and all that is within me right so there are a lot of things that we had to we had to focus on so there is a shift that has taken place from that time and is currently taking place now now the truth is while the shift is happening we have to kind of spend a little time and focus upon self just a little bit because if we give 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 then what's gonna happen so i get left a bus stop bus have reached downtown i still stand up right you're gonna be drained right you are going to be physically exhausted emotionally exhausted and all the entire works right so we are still navigating the pandemic period but this part of it you know they tend to call it the post pandemic but the pandemic is still having its ripple effect on us so in order for us to survive as an industry as a professional in the industry, we have to make sure that as an individual, we are surviving. We are well. Because if we are not well, then as the consummate professional, you won't be well. And then the industry will automatically suffer. So you play a particular role. With me? Good. I want to go down to the people at the back, you know, but I just really be obedient. Right? I'm not giving you no problem. People at the back, are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, GD, we are with you. Okay, we are the church ain't going nowhere. All right. I like that. So, we're going we're gonna to look at wellness and resilience today. We're going to look at the challenges to wellness and resilience. And we're going to talk about some strategies. Because here's the thing. A lot of the things that I will say today, you probably already know. Mm? So I'm just here as a friendly reminder, a gentle reminder. It's no new information. But what I like is that it's an opportunity to remind you, to remind yourself, to remember that wellness is important and you have to execute it. It's not just something we write from pen from paper, you know, because we love to take notes in class, you know. But then as when time the door shut, we throw down the something them and gone back to our business, but not us. No. We are the church. We ain't going nowhere, right? Amen. We are steadfast. You really have a lot, amen? <laughs> <laughs> we are steadfast in it. And so we're going to ensure that everything that we learn or anything that we learn, something that we learn today, we pretty much execute, right? So we're starting with the individual. So... Here's what's going to happen. For the first half, I'm going to give you information. We're going to work the information. But you see, for the second half, after we get the little coffee break and come back strong, I will not go do the work. Oh, that so? Yes, good. So, follow me now as I follow Christ. So, the core of us is mind, body, and soul. We didn't know that, don't yes. yes, man. Everybody. We got a mind, we got a body, and we got a soul. Right? Now, which part do you think is the most valuable part of you? It's a hard road to travel. Yes, man, all of them is really important. But hi, remember the profile now, has her psychologist I'm asking you which part you think is the most valuable asset? Go to the cardiac department. Leave. Leave. Which part do you think is the most valuable? Yes, you are my favorite. So as a psychologist, the bias is going to come in where I'm going to tell you that the mind is the most valuable asset, right? So outside of this room, the mind is still the most valuable asset, right? So watch me now. Everything is connected. 
Your mind is connected to your body and your body is connected to your soul. So all facets of you are actually very, very important. There is no dispute where that is concerned, right? Because here is the thing with wellness on a whole. If one part of you start to pop down, then the other part of them have a follow suit, right? So if your mind is not functioning as it should, it is going to take a look at toll on your body and on your spirit. Yeah? We are part down, you know, you really want to go to church, go praise the Lord, you know, because I really listen on for praise Jesus for you, yeah, you know. But when things are boom, like you get your new car or you get a promotion, you're going, you sit on a front bench. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> has not passed me by. Come on, church. Not true. Mm -mm. We don't have to talk loud. Me will talk on behalf of all of us, right? But then, sometimes when we feel a little sick in our body, so we tend to think that it is just a physical something. You feel a little back ear, can you feel a little tension at the shoulder, and you look at head ear, can so you just think that it is just purely physical. But the truth is, sometimes is the problem them the fire so around ear so and right ear so, right? So sometimes when you go to the doctor and then you yeah, look at high blood pressure medication and say, you know, you have you suffer from migraine and so on. They look at the physical symptoms and the physiological aspect of it, which is one part. But so many times you can't really get rid of it because after you get the prescription and you fill it, you go right back to the problem, right? So I'm not not nod because maybe your wife will look and think. <laughs> me has says things, not nod. <laughs> 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 Let me do the nod. <laughs> Come in and know where to put you when you go home, right? So, so it's all connected. Sometimes stress, sometimes depression and anxiety will manifest. These are like mental issues. They will manifest in the physical aspect of, you, of your body. So everything is pretty much connected. So we have to genuinely watch that. So if, and this is on a side note, if you have constant issues, constant pains and so on, Sometimes you have to examine what's the psychosocial factors that is around you that is causing you to have this persistent migraine, tension, headache, um, hypertension, back pain, all of those things. Those are on a, a side note, but it's real. Yes, sometimes you need to change jobs. Sometimes you need to change community. Sometimes you need to change friends. All is connected. Everything is connected. Yes, but... From my perspective, the mind is the most valuable asset, and so you must fiercely protect it. And I'm going to tell you why. We're starting with the individual. Your mind is your most valuable asset, and I'm going to explain these two things real quickly, and then you're going to agree with me, right? So your mind is what I like to call the seat of your existence, which means that everything that you are begins with the mind, right? The job that you fulfill, the role that you fulfill in the job, the relationship that you have, the household that you set up, you know, just who you are as a person. If you are an extrovert or an introvert, it's all generated in the mind. It's you. Your mind completely different from my mind. So that is what allows you to function on a daily basis, right? So if you focus on it, how you think, how you reason, how you feel, how you act, how you behave, all of those things generate from the mind. So it is the seat of your existence. And that is why in psych we say, you know, it's your reality, your perception, because it's what you have pretty much created. So if you don't like something, you can figure out that you don't like it, generate what you like in your mind, and kind of switch to that. Kind of simple on the most basic level, yeah? But kind of hard because we have to get the mind clicking. So it's really the seat of your existence. Everything that you are as an individual has generated from the mind, but it is your generation, your creation. I can't do it. And that's what makes everybody distinct. So every trial and tribulation that you have gone through, every school, every class, every qualification, Every, every experience that you've had, all is 
housed in the faculty of the mind, and that's what makes you, you, right? So I can't count for save my life. I was teaching, and I said, um, how many students in the class? And they said, 12 on this register, miss. And 38 on this register. And I said, oh, we have 140 students in here. <laughs> and a shame afterwards. I said, but Sashina, that can't write. Oh, you get 100. You're going in a three digits. Right? Me never half by one or two. You know, me half by about 60. So I, I can't do no accounting work. I don't have the knowledge and the, the requisites to do that. But if you are good at that, then that is what you are doing and that is the value that is to you so as an individual in your profession as practitioners and as leaders what you have harnessed over the year to make you you is encapsulated in your mind and it allows you to function on a daily basis so when questions are asked and the curriculum is to be developed and the strategic plan is to be executed are you that because you from your mind is able to do that. Nobody else can. And that is why when we dress up and we go to a little job interview, when we get the work, we're excited because it means that what we have brought to the table is of excellence and then give you work. So my time we get some work, you know, we ask, what people then hire me for? <laughs> they hire me, you know, because they hire me into a disaster. Right? So I you go in the department and you and judge are one and work, you know. <laughs> and you have to say, you sure them did really want to pick me because I bought four eyeglasses in my department, you know. And what if they think I'm an eyeglass? <laughs> right? So sometimes you have to do a little check it out. But it comes from your mind. And that aspect of your mind is what genuinely makes you unique. Yeah? And so, as a professional, I can't do what you do. None at all. And the response and the, the information that I get and give, or that you get and give, is unique to your own experience. And so you are you. That's your mind. Even on a personal level, the relationships and the friendships that you forge is unique to you. So either they might enhance your mind, or they might cause all those to tumble down upon you. But it is unique to you. And so it creates your existence. Who you talk to in the morning, your promotions that you might get, and the students that are in your, your presence that you are able to reach and touch, and the inspiration that you are able to give. It's all you, and it all rests in your mind. Now, the value part of it comes where, should something happen, because the faculties of the mind is what allows you to exist and operate in this reality, you make a choice to come here, you make a choice to learn, you make a choice to, to better yourself. Because of all of that, if there ever is a time when you step outside of your mind, value number two comes into place. You cannot go to the shop and say, hi, serve, beg your pawn and mind there. Does not exist. You cannot go to Price Smart, for those of us who push the big trolley at Price Smart, and buy one six pack of mine and put it in and check it out. Now watch me, the cardiologist will tell you that the heart is vital, but you can get a look at heart transplant. True? All right. The orthopedic surgeon will say, boy, you lose the lower limb of your foot, you know, but you don't know, lose your life. But they make all the prosthetics now where all the mature skin tone and ray, and you're doing many things with the prosthetics. You have, um, you want to look at blood, blood vital, even if your blood type rare, them can go source it from somewhere and replace where you have death. But I never see a soul do a mind transplant. You understand? And I threw it. And the minute you step outside of your mind, <laughs> you see that glass something right or so? Pull it so, and go through his so, and turn so. Yeah, yeah? Black <laughs> Right? It is 
your most valuable asset because it is what makes you you. Even if something happens to you physically, nobody can go your house go do what you do. Because no matter if you go there, go clean your ear. And mommy don't make it like this. And mommy don't clean it like that. And all of that. You understand? So it really is irreplaceable. It is at a point where you have to recognize that. Because it, um, if you give me a $200, me pass it, you know. Also, we are also, you know, I want me pass it, you know? But I cash me taking, you know, I mean, I take IOU and transfer. Okay. Hi. Hold up and call. Is it roast by Brexit? <laughs> so your mind is valuable because it is the seat of your existence and it is irreplaceable. You see, once you understand that, you are now at the position where you are able to fiercely protect it. So when we start to talk about wellness and things that affect your wellness and all of that, you don't just take it slight. Because remember, you can't go price man. Right? can't go up on Amazon.com and put it in your chart, and then it's delivered. It's your mind, and you have worked with it, filling it with knowledge and repairing it from a lot of stress and all of that to have it where it is. And so, because life, like the pandemic, or as the pandemic has illustrated, it's dynamic and it's unpredictable. You have to make sure that you are resilient, but your resilience rests on your level of wellness. Yeah? With me? So we agree, yes. I want yes, me here, you know. He's my favorite. <laughs> Nobody else in here is my favorite. Okay, sorry, you have the sweetie. You're my favorite too. All right? <laughs> eh? Yeah. I'll focus, man. You are my favorite still, right? So, we have to watch this now. So, your level of wellness, and I want you to get this, your level of wellness dictates your degree of resilience. So, if you're not well in any one of these areas, but specifically mentally, your mental fortitude, if you're not at optimum where mental wellness is concerned, then it is going to affect your degree, your level of resilience. Right? With me? Sure. Is that right? Want one sweetie? Yes. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what kind of... Um, <laughs> they should honor the sweetie and I talk to diabetes at the same time. No, man, let's go. So we're looking at resilience. What do we mean when we say resilience? Who can tell me? It's two, two, two specific words may I look for. Two of them start with B. Start with what? B, B. If you're not guess it, we will tell it. Who have it? There you go. Bounce back. Holistic definition of resilience is that it is a process and the outcome of successfully adapting to difficult or challenging life experiences yeah especially through mental emotional and behavioral flexibility and adjustment to external and internal demands so when you talk about resilience we're talking about the art of bouncing back but the art of bouncing back successfully rests heavily on adaptation as well as adjustment. You get that? Big things are happening, you know? right? So if you are going to adapt to difficult challenges and you are going to adjust to external and internal demands, then you have to make sure say you are what? W-E-L-L. -L. -L. See that? Good. But the key to it is that we like to call it preventative more so than interventive. Because you see, if you know, guard up yourself from before, when the something come you know, and start to hit you, you may be really not have the time to go get help. If I play dandy shandy, nobody never enough of themselves and play dandy shandy. Anyway, 
If you ever see anybody I play dandy shandy and a two man there at the end of the show, Jesus. But, uh, just all when them say, come man, <laughs> take it from me. Hold your head straight and walk on by because those two men are going to destroy you. Right? So life is really like a little game of dandy shandy. Them start off soft with the chewing, you know, and you run bougie. <laughs> and you, huh, and you, know, and you watch the ball are going at the ear, you know. You see, after them done with the two or three overhead. <laughs> yes, so. Yes, so. Sometimes you feel like I'll shut your gate, and them not either worse if all your brother or your cousin. <laughs> not showing a mercy, you know, right? So life is like that. As some challenges coming to you unexpected. You don't know if it will come high. You don't know if it will come low. You don't know which end of the spectrum it is coming from. But if you are well before, meaning say, you know how to play dandy shandy. And you strap up yourself with all of the dandy shandy skills. Yes. yes. And get your little 10 and you have to, yes, you have to know you look at gymnastics and you have to go down low. So if you have knee problem, no bother. Right? So all of that will help you within that ring of life to adapt to difficulties. Right? So you can't no, no, overplay than the shandy, not have no idea of it. Gone in at the middle and I go ball out. Well, uh, man, we are not, we are not, only take time with me, now, man. No, no. At them time, then I'm going to sell it at you. So you have to come to the ring well. And that's what we're talking about when we are here. We're not just going to wait until something happens for you to figure out just how resilient you are or are not. You understand? You have to go up on a little thing on the side and try to build up yourself along the way as you go so that when life's challenges come, you can adapt and you can adjust. Yes? That's why we are all here. If perchance you are in the ring and it happen, you can equip yourself because some of we are fast learner. Because after the first one lick here and nearly swell up your jawbone, yeah. So you have to make a quick decision and say, come now, is either I'm going to stand up and get the pelt in or I'm going to act fast and hide behind somebody or learn how to side quickly. And that is the adjustment aspect of it. So you can adapt, and you, you can adapt, and you can most definitely adjust. Yes? But again, the root of resilience is what? Now focus. Me never say how to cite me. My people fire me. Wellness. The root of resilience is? All right, one more time. The root of resilience is very good. And your level of? All right. So if the level of wellness is low, chances of you bouncing back is low. You understand? And that's why we are telling you you have to focus from now. So your level of wellness dictates your degree of resilience. Now, resilience is important. Resilience, see, how one word? Sound funny. The art of resilience, make a bougie talk. The art of resilience is important because life happens. Cannot predict life none at all. Today you're strolling around, happy as a lark, and tomorrow. Well, maybe never tomorrow, because do we the economy are going on now. Today, we day here, and we are celebrating, and we are laughing and talking, and as the seminar, done your turn on the radio. Hmm? Boom, something happened. So life happens, and a part of life is that it's not perfect. It's unpredictable. So you need to be resilient. You have to have that characteristic within you, because it's the only way you're going to make it through the Gideon. Right? Daniel saw the stone. Where did he see the stone? Okay. What do you think of song, man? I'm a little afraid of that. It was our kind of stone. That's my little kind of stone. But I wonder if him did that when him and I died. Daniel. 
<laughs> what do you think that part of the story we go, right? It was a lily white. How this stone a roll a roll a roll and him stop to see say lily white. You know, there's something not right in the story. But I saw we exaggerate. It was you never know, just white, you know. It was lily <laughs> rolling. The only one say stone was rolling to Babylon. Like, well, if I question, you know. But anyway, we now we now trouble Daniel side the stone, right? Life happens, and so we must have resilience. The art of resilience, right? Having the art of resilience also builds character. Because once you have that core feature, it says to you that it doesn't matter what happened, you will bounce back. Can I search for it when the things start to happen? Yes? You must build it before. Use even the experiences that have gone on before you to build it. So now run from the challenges them when them coming up because as sure as Daniel saw that stone rolling, the situation will come back because it must build that characteristic within you. With me? So it builds character. The art of resilience also gets us through hard times. And again, hard time is going to happen. All if you are hermit will live in the cave of Fern Gully. Trust me, hard time is going to happen. And we have a government. <laughs> no, no, but I don't know. Me, me take it, problem. You have the government. You have the government. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, time I go rough. Right? Mr. Stop and look at the store to buy the Starbucks and the lady say, 5,000, one lady stand up behind me with four something in her hand, you know. But the lady was saying something else. So the lady said, 5,000 something. And I really was store um, total she gave you, you know, but she had said 5,000. And the lady behind me stuck her back, you know. She said, what you say? 5,000 five, five, five something. So the lady said, no, miss, it's not your bill. It's something. You're in a oh. Then it's like she's still nervous, you know, because she'll load the something on the counter and I look where she can take off. So the lady said, miss, no worry. It's not, it's not. Your bill, you know? And she has a boy, lady, have a shorty bread in her hand. And she have, well, maybe at the bacon, because I think her chest little high in the morning, yeah? Right? So she have a little bacon in her hand. And um, two, two lasco. So you can just imagine the shock. So the truth is, time's really tough, right? But if we have resilience, we are able to get through. It also builds mental stability. So why do we need it? It's, it's, it's important because life happens. It builds character. It gets us through hard times. And it builds mental stability. Now my question to you. Now are your time for talk. What are some of the factors that affects wellness for you in this particular industry don't all shout at once and cause a stampede <coughs> right but what are some of the factors i have two little facts up there now but but i like to hear from you the people my fellow constituents <laughs> what are your problems <laughs> and when i get solved enough from myself my fellow constituents right but um what are some of the factors that affect we wellness for you as persons in the tvet industry you look now, man, man. That they're, they're not lack of resources. So we have the no, the no factor, right? And 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 the things that are required, no. So you see, you you're caught between a rock and a hard place in this life. So we are doing what we can to the best of our ability with the limited resources and the heavy demands that are there. But then at the end of the day, what? For us. So that's also something we are genuine, uh, genuinely also battling. That's a part of our wellness. Because not only do we assume that we are not appreciated, but it play out in front of our very eyes. Because after we go a war with David and Goliath and we go and we slingshot and so on, and we think, say, aha, then we get a little rather more via so now. And it's like we are say, hmm. So easy, isn't it? 
so much appreciated, but what about us? These are things to our wellness as well, because it contributes to a sense of demotivation. Because the truth is, then I find out for the people that I work with and I serve, you know, but I get up sometime, you know, I tell you the truth. I know the money me could get up. But it should never be a sentence that comes out of our mouth to say, well, you know the money, but because we have to survive. We have to eat, you know, and we have to sustain our families as well. So that's a big blow to our wellness. And then on top of that now, the task, not just the no demand factor, but the job itself is, is, is demanding. You understand? So it's not like a nine to five or a, 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 a eight to four kind of a vibe, you know. It's beyond that because we have to take into consideration the preparation, right, to execute on a daily basis. The innovation that comes from the same valuable asset, which is the mind, because if something not take right or so, we have to figure out how to do it. The spending from our pocket as a part of the, 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 the resource and, and, and looking at it, we now going to know, say, boy, I need to get this in order for it to be delivered well and we we'll walk past it. I don't know. There is just something within us. I was saying, I don't have it, but I need to get it. We're also talking about time outside of just the regular contact hours per se. Because if I see with them, see, I have a tree, you know, I say, Sir, how will you think that, you know? When you hear this, sir, you know, because you can't busy, I go about your business, you have to stop and take it in. And that also plays on your wellness. Also, their wellness plays on your wellness yeah. as well. You understand? Because you look one them come now and they must struggle. And I, I, I don't know. As a... As a as, as, a per, as a person who straddles both education and psychology, it's rather depressing sometimes. Because when you hear, when you see a student not performing as should, and you hear the story behind why, it, 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 it's really daunting. They too have a lot. And as, a, as a, an, an educator, as a leader, as a practitioner, you can't just come and have on the blinkers. You also have that part of you that caters to them as well. So these are, uh, these are the factors, some of the factors that does affect the wellness. All right? So the personal growth aspect of it now is, is, is really that. And sometimes because they are not growing, whether it is intentional or unintentionally, what you find is that they become a pestilence to other persons around them. So their wellness now affects our wellness, right? Or maybe our wellness affects other people's wellness, you know, but we're not ready for that story yet, right? So here's the thing. If these challenges are not resolved, then resilience becomes difficult and it becomes non-existent. So if we don't use these difficulties and the experience from overcoming these difficulties, right? To build our level of resilience, then resilience now going to exist. Right? So some of us who love to complain about the challenges, and others of us who love to run away from the challenges, you are depriving yourself of building resilience because you have to face it head on. Now get an amen for that part. Yeah. Amen. It's all right. I will see my own amen. Amen. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, I will say my own amen. And that's the, that's the challenge with us when it comes on to being resilient. A lot of us want to be resilient, but we are not willing to work to become resilient. Because every time a, a situation or a circumstance comes up that is now grooming us to become such, we murmur, we complain. And on the other side of the challenges is not only the resilience itself, but the character that you would have built outside of resilience, right? So you're stepping into another side of greatness. A whole heap of us, when the pandemic come, you know, we quarrel, go. We quarrel, we quarrel, we quarrel. And all when everybody else don't quarrel and I move on, you know. Some of us sit down and we still are quarrel same way. We have missed the mark. We would have missed the opportunity 
to build resilience because we would not have resolved the challenges that we are facing, right? So, for the TVET industry, the post-pandemic era is looking to this particular industry to be an essential tool for building recovery and resilience, a route to recovery and resilience. And it is moving in that particular direction because it is looking towards things like quality education, decent work, and economic growth. And that's true. This particular industry is the gateway to the rebuilding and the reshifting and the refocusing of the economy as we know it. But it's not going to be able to fulfill the sustainable development goals four and eight unless we who are in it have caught on to that particular vision and are therefore executing the quality education, the decent work, and the economic growth. But don't worry, I'm here to tell you how we can build personal and professional resilience towards this particular goal, all right? So, what do you see? I'm going to ask it in a, in a better way, right? But listen, before y'all hold up your hands. What? Take a long look at the picture on the screen and tell me what you see. Chaos. Chaos. Organize, organize this organization. Mm. This organization. <laughs> <laughs> you know me never a lot? But now we are smiling. What you see? Confusion, disorganized, disorganization of the disorganization men. <laughs> All right. What else I say? Mess. A little boy who? He's not sleeping in his bed. Comfort. Yes, but your son, like who go in your house and take a picture of your son's room? Not true. <laughs> Anybody else? They are. There you go. What did I say? Untidiness. Too much destruction. Good. Hold on, Panda. Where you stand up? Now, but I tell the man answer about that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yes, some people are comfortable. She said, um, organization and this organ. Yes. What you say now? I'm saying creativity. So, so he's in touch with being with his inner self and he's being creative. No, no, no. No, oh. Yes. I see creativity too. Oh, what a wonderful insight. Anyway, we're not laugh because you have the right answer. Come with me, sir. Very good. When you look at the picture, and we're going to piggyback off you because that's where we're going, right? He's my favorite now. So when you look at it, initially you see all of those things. The chaos, the mess, confusion, for real. Just chaka chaka, disorganized, right? And that's one way of looking at it. So we're going to shift perspective. And I'm going to ask you to shift perspective now. Look up on the screen and tell me all of the positive things that you can pick out of the perspective that you're looking at right there. So lighting. Eh? Uh, this there's a house. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Yeah. At least there's a house and the room look like it's as bigger than where we live, right? <laughs> yeah. There is artwork in there, yes. What else we know? Come now, sir, we, sir, when did you run up in mode about the creativity? I, boy, when did you run up in mode about the creativity? I, boy, you run up in mode about the creativity? No, no, sir, your opportunity is not miss it. What else we see? He has everything that he needs in the same space. Very good. What else? Colorful. Very colorful, yes. Um, come again. 
It's appealing to his eyes, yeah, yeah. Creative. 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 Yes. Educate for the kinesthetic. Yes. Um, yes. Like what you find is that the hands are, the, everything that will create the enduring um, learning that Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and then when we start to pick apart now, we are seeing things like geography um, happening there, astrology. We see that he's extremely athletic because not only is there basketball, but there's also tennis racket as well. And he have a whole heap of clothes to throw down. What can he do now to find what? And there are, di there are different perspectives. Is there anybody in here that would be comfortable in that room? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're not comfortable? Yeah, you know, yeah. And that's it. So the idea with this is, is about perspective. When you looked at it initially, would you say that there are more positives than negatives where the room is concerned? Yes. Never thought so now we don't want to start the owner of the real of the negative. Oh, it's messy. Because you like control. No, it's not yes. about control, but say for instance, yes. you have a learner who is, it's all about music. Everything has to be put to music. Yes. Then you have one that is visual. Mm -hmm. You have another one who you have to give the notes and explain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I have a slow one that I have to have at the desk. Yes. And I have a one holding the hand. Mm -hmm. You find a way to integrate all of that because you know what's going to happen. That's why the job itself is challenging. You know what's going to happen? If you choose to compromise on some in terms of the delivery of a lesson, it means that you choose to compromise on some, being the recipient of that particular lesson. You, you trample on somebody else's creativity and somebody else's learning style because it's too much and I think the problem is, is the, 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 the problem is genuinely bigger than what we can solve here because the truth is it should cater to all learner and learning style and we crept them up and said come and sit in here I will teach you you understand and if my child or me as a as a creative individual is going to come and just it's just gonna be um, notes on the board and all of them something that y'all kill me and then now y'all will tell me for assess them and tell us that the pitney have ADHD. Exactly. None of it. I read a book. It yes. says that we were always told to grow up. Mm -hmm. So hence we grow up. Yes. And hence we left the child behind mm -hmm. and we killed the creativity. Tickety, yes. Mm -hmm. I then recall I used to be very good mm -hmm. at art. I used to draw a lot of them. And my mother said to me, that will not put any food on the table. Yes. Yes. And then when I then I was with my uncle some time ago, and he told me that my father do very well. Mm -mm. Right? I see now my little daughter, daughter Alex, she loves to jump. I see little girl use balloons and make dresses yes, and yes. all of that. Right? Yes, and yes, I said to her mother, Alone. Yeah, man, she yeah. You have to become the doctor yeah. or the lawyer. I am fine. Yeah, oh, gosh, man. That's why she has been asking for us a lot of times. So yes, man. Even within the classroom, we want to do it this way, do it this way. And then the concept is missing because we want them to walk in that street. Path. Absolutely. We see so much of a teacher centered <laughs> approach yes. and not necessarily a child centered. And that's where the, the learning really stops within our children. Mm -hmm. Because it is about the teacher, she's thinking about the, <laughs> yeah. the rodents in the room, all of those things, yeah. and not thinking about how that um, the box and the different things can help to, True. to stimulate play and learning among the child. Absolutely. So it's not necessarily just what your way, but mm -hmm. let us look at how it benefits mm -hmm. the students or the children that are involved. And that's why it's important. No, it's for the
for us to shift perspective. And that's what this exercise was all about. The ability to shift perspective. It's not about right or wrong, but are you able to shift pers uh, perspective? Because with the newness that's coming or the innovation that we are involved in, that is rolling and carrying us into the future, yeah? Not necessarily starting with COVID-19, but being exacerbated by it. It's now saying to us, we we'll have to assume a posture as persons as well as professionals where we understand that, you see, a perspective shift, it needs to be number one on the agenda. We cannot continue, and you mentioned it, the struggle between the then and the now. Because if we do, holding on like the dinosaur, we are going to be extinct for real, and we all get left at the bus stop. So it's, we're big on perspective shift. So I'm asking, what if shifting perspective affects our wellness? Mm -hmm. Earlier, I wanted to ask the question, in light of wellness and being resilient, how would I treat with that situation? And because earlier we discussed that our mind is unique to us. Yeah. And so our thoughts and our values and our principles and mm -hmm. our perspective is going to be based on our thoughts or yes. mind. So if I am to demonstrate resilience, yes. do I always need to adapt? Do I need to adjust at all times? Or should I retreat at some point? For self-preservation and wellness. A part of adaptation and adjustment when it comes on to resilience um, is about self-evaluation. And it's always black or white. It's either you are going to sink or you are going to swim. Right? And any path that you choose is a path nonetheless. Yes? I, I don't know how many of you watch the, um, the man with the gloves. Avengers. Anybody have the idea of Avengers? Yeah. And, and, and in Avengers, you have, um, I don't really catch all I good, you know, but this is what I catch. The one with the cape, Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. And some stone went on, time stone was given and whatever. And then at the end of it, with the destruction, we are told that there were over, for argument's sake, a thousand different realities, alternatives to this particular situation, and they would have not won in any of them. We're not going to focus on the not one in any of them. The point is that whichever route that you choose, it is going to carry you somewhere. You understand? And you have to, in deciding whether you're going to adapt or adjust, have to ask yourself if you are going to move. And if you move in this particular direction, this is what you want. Any movement at all is going to cause a level of discomfort. But you have to ask yourself and resolve within yourself, is this the discomfort that I want to take on? Because even not making a choice is still making a choice. Make sense? Yeah. So when you move in terms of building resilience and adjustment and, and adaptation, it's not just in a wide spectrum of things. It is in accordance to whatever your goal or your vision is. So. The answer to your question is that it rests heavily on you and who you want to form in the future. You see what I'm saying? So, there is no going around the fact that in order to be resilient or to be considered resilient or to prove that you are resilient, you have to adapt to change. Yeah. That is it. You have to be flexible. If not, then you are going to be stuck. And the resilience that you will demonstrate in this place of stuckness is only going to be good enough for what you would have encountered then, but not what you are about to encounter in the future. And for some people, it's all right. I'm not moving. I am satisfied with being a dinosaur. But... 
for others, no. Because we are moving out of a particular era and getting into something else. And I have to, for my sustainability, for my development, and for my carrying on of whatever legacy, I have to move. And that's the power of resilience. Because life is fluid. It was never meant to be static where you accomplish it and say, all right, I hit this. Mm -hmm. But you have to move and flow with the tide if it is that you are going to be resilient and be your best self. Because at no point in time, you have it all together 100%. There is always room to improve, which is fine. Yeah? So, the proof of resilience rests in these five things. Adapt. Being able to adapt to change. Coping with uncertainty. Managing stress. Building strong teams. And maintaining motivation. What I want you to do for me, before we get into the building of the resilience, is to take up your resilience resource and book. And what you're going to do is that you are going to turn to the wellness wheel. And the wellness wheel is a self-assessment. Because in order to get to resilience, and the level of resilience that is, you are going to have to analyze the degree of wellness that you have. What is going on with you. So, when you turn to the wellness wheel, you're going to get some crayons, right? And some, well, crayons in general, right? We're going to do a little coloring, right? So here is how it's going to work, right? So we're going to share like one big happy family because our only us and we have things to do. So the wellness wheel shows that there are eight dimensions to self, right? Eight dimensions to self. You have social wellness, emotional wellness, uh, spiritual wellness, intellectual, physical, environmental, financial, and occupational. When you look at the wellness wheel, you're going to see that it starts at the core, right? In the middle here, so, and it extends, um, and it extends, you have any more? And it extends to the outward part here, yeah? Um, on the outskirts is 10, and the little circle count its way back, in, 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 right? Here is what you're going to do. You are going to decide through the questions on the back. So we're going to do the self-assessment on the back. You are going to use each category, go to each category, and you are going to read each question. You're going to give each of the questions under each either a 2 or a 1. Right? 2 is the strongest part of the spectrum. So one, not so much. Two, definitely, yeah? When you write two or one, you are going to add the numbers for each category. Don't worry, I'll go again. So you're going to write the numbers, number that you get for each category. So say, for example, you read number one, it's a two for you. You read number two, it's a two for you. You read number three, it's a two for you, and so on. It means that the entire category, because it each has five statements, would have be a ten. You are going to go back to the front eye wellness wheel now. Find the occupational part at it first, and then you will call it 10. Go straight out. If it is 8 or 9 or so on, you call it to the line per the pie chart. You get it? Yes. All right. of the paper, we're keeping it pushing, is your core principles. So write three character traits that um, are unquestionable for you. If your eyes should lock tomorrow, these are the three things that you would want persons to say that you most definitely have, right? You have a whole host of them. These are considered to be your core principles. Are you honest? Are you trusting? Are you authentic? Are you... Um, Caring, are you a people pleaser or are you person centered? You know, any one of those um, characteristics. What are your top three? And this is your, your activity because this is what is going to anchor you in your wellness. So if you say 
that you are honest for argument's sake, then your honesty must drive your wellness. You understand? Number two, he has his authenticity. So that is what is going to anchor him to his level of wellness. Are you authentic as a person? Because if you are not true to you and the circle that you run in, you're going to have wellness problems, and that is going to affect just how resilient you are. You understand? And then resort. Oh, that's a nice one. Resourceful, as in number three. Yeah? So if you are a resourceful person, you are moving in that state of being resourceful, then you know say, when it comes time for you to adapt to change, you're yeah, all right. All right, yeah. Tomorrow morning, I like that, right? So that's, that's it. Everybody has written their three core, and, and use this to kind of guide you on an everyday. If a decision is affecting your wellness, like you're heen and hind between something, look at your core principles and ask yourself if you are acting in accordance to it. Yes? If you have as a core principle, creativity, but you just stuck one somewhere and you're not doing nothing and you're not, it means that you're not being true to yourself. It will affect your wellness and it's therefore going to affect your resilience. Make sense? Yeah. All right, good. So we are keep it pushing. So we are skip a page now, right? And we are going down in the down in the. Now this is your sit with self page and we're going to walk through it as we walk through this. Now, it says, write one thing in your professional life that you have not yet adjusted to since the pandemic. And this is clearly holding you back from growth. So we are linking it with the first one, adapt to change. If you are able to adapt to change as it happens, it means that you are on your way to resilience. Now, the as it happens doesn't necessarily mean as quickly as possible because sometimes you have to sit with something. Remember, me tell you when COVID comes, you have to quarrel, quarrel a little bit. That's fine. But there has to come a point when you quarrel, 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 and you decide, say, so you're going to don't quarrel now and you're going to adapt to the change. When you adapt to change, after the quarrel, you must accept that the change has happened. Why a lot of individuals personally and professionally struggle even in the post-pandemic era, is that there's still a quarrel about what was before. And we, return, we need to return to the, the normal that, no, there is no returning, but there is an adaptation to it. Once you are adapting, it means that you are accepting the change. Yes? You look, you observe, and you say, okay, it has changed. Let me accept the change, and then you decide to act. Accepting the change is one thing. I saw it going on, you know. I saw it going on. I saw it go. But you know, do nothing after you say, I saw it go. You are going to remain stuck and it's going to affect your level of resilience. So you now have to decide to act. Am I going to stay here or am I going to move forward so that I can build my resilience? You decide to act. When you decide to act as a part of adapting to the change, you have to begin to join forces with the people them who are moved with you. If you still sit down with the negative Nancy and the depressing Damien and all of those people, the sad Sally's, you are going to be stuck and you are going to be hindered from your resilience. You are with me? So once you quarrel, quarrel first, which is fine, you have to begin to don't quarrel now and accept the change. Once you do that, you decide that you are going to act and you join forces with people who are now ready to move because you are going to need your support team to move in the direction towards resilience. Yes? After you join up your local forces now, you are going to utilize your superpower. Now, your superpower is that strength that is within you, that ability that you have you can pick it from your core principles that is going to help you to shoot forward. So your superpower is honesty. And your superpower is authenticity and resourcefulness. That is what you are going to use. Now. Have Billy and Bill resilience now, you know. So that is what you are now going to use as your anchoring so that you can adapt to the change. You understand? You'll be honest. You'll be a real authentic self, 
and then you have to be resourceful because you are building your resilience because you are adapting by adapting to change. You cannot move into a higher place, a better place, um, if you are not adapting to change. You're going to be a dinosaur. Yes? Once you begin to utilize your, your superpower, you have to stay positive and you have to talk. I have a back of his story in there, so. Okay, if I have a back of a little story, you know, it starts to spill out for everybody and disgrace you, so, right? The podcast is very important, right? You cannot go through life without talking about what is and what is, right? So you have to talk. The talking is going to help you to get the resources that you need, and it's going to help you to move you in the space that you ought to be in. Follow? So this is how you adapt to change. If you are move, say you are move. I'm moving. The bother, if this so if the mumbling I got ah but though. If you're gonna move, you say you're moving and your word is your bond, you move. That is how you adapt to change as a means of Resilience. You with me? So answer the question for me now. Write one thing in your professional life that you have not yet adjusted to in the pandemic. Some of you can't bother with the Zoom room. Some of you can't bother with the room of the arm. Because we are social beings. How we sometimes write it? What is it that is keeping you from your growth? Right? Mm -hmm. So I will not buy no technological phone because it's too expensive. So we have the bang and then we're still ring. Turn it up, 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 turn it up. I'm just going to shame. Shame on yourself, man, right? So, now, all the people that must say, don't look at the what's happening, man. You have a focus, man, right? So why write one thing in your professional life that you have not yet adjusted to? And then the second one says, write one thing in your personal life that you have not yet adjusted to since the pandemic. Write those two things for me. Then now you are going to identify two upcoming opportunities. You can either make up these opportunities or you can identify one that is coming up, that is calling to your spirit, that you have been skirting and write it down and decide that you're going to do it. You follow? Remember, say, say look honest to something here, say, no, think about it. Sometimes, you know, it might be a little promotion I keep, or you see a little post, right? But you're holding yourself back. That is your sit with self, right? A part of proving that you are resilient means that you are able to cope with uncertainty. How do you cope with uncertainty? You remain grounded by believing in yourself. A lot of times the doubt that we experience don't necessarily come from those around us. Sometimes people don't ever see it. We are the ones who create the doubt upon our own self. And we don't want to do this because we're not sure if we're going to know how to do it. And we're not so certain and all of this. The belief in yourself is what is going to help you to remain grounded so that you can cope with the level of uncertainty that exists. Believe in the core principles that you have. Believe in the power of your mind, which is your most valuable asset. And believe in your own skills that you have acquired over your, the length of your life that's going to help you to cope with uncertainty. Look around for opportunities. If you try to sit in the state that, is, that was, that is where you're going to remain. Be flexible, take shots, don't be afraid. A lot of us could reach much further than where we are mentally, physically, emotionally, intellectually, but we are crippled by fear because we're not sure what keep beyond the horizon and we're not willing to take shots. Believe in yourself, look around for those opportunities, 
be flexible, and take the shot then. With me? And that is why this one, the third one at the bottom is important. Because you have to look in your own personal and professional life for the opportunities that are coming to you to help you to be well and help you to have that level of resilience and you have to take it. If you don't take it, you're going to remain stuck. With me? All right. The next point is managing stress. Proof of you being resilient is in the fact that you manage stress. Life is dynamic. Life is unpredictable. Stress is going to happen. Aye, aye, aye. But you have to be able to manage the stress. How do you manage the stress? You develop a self-care plan. And here we may have to tell you no, good and proper. The self-care plan is not a break glass um, in case of emergency kind of vibe. The self-care plan is what I like to call a one-one coca full basket. Miss to me clearly amount to something. It's a one-one coca full basket kind of mentality, which means this. Ever look at dear? That the sun rise, you do a one little something for your mental health. You see, when you talk about, I'm not going to wait till summer to go up on the vacation and so. When you finally save up and you reach the hotel, you sleep for three days straight. Eh? Tomorrow, my God, this Oh, God, I want to go to the beach, you know, but I'm so tired. Eh? Never, I'm 21 of us, yes. Yeah? Yeah? You have to take on the one one poker full basket because when you go to Rio and Grand Palladium, by the time you reach back your yard, you're ready for go on the next vacation because you pop down. Eh? Eh? Some of you see the activities, they ask where the volleyball court, they never know. Where's the lazy river? Then they did have lazy river because you lock up in the room and sleep. Yeah? No, no. The one one coca full basket principle says that every day you do something small for your mental health and for your self care and for manage stress. So you see me carry it right down. You see all bathing? Bathing is a self care something. Some of you up and rush so often and hurry up and go work. We never a cup with self good. Buy the nice um good soap them will smell nice. I'll turn on the water, your beard, scrub your hand, scrub your foot, scrub good, turn your bag. Yeah, man, I might swap that in a little Irish spring, man, when it lift up. Yeah, man, you turn your back and make this, this, this shower beat out your back. Self-care. Eh? Yes, man, it's fucking nice. Because you can put all that dry and it smells very little life, you know. For far, And you see, how you may like it now, they are really my favorite for two. Right? It's the five minutes or the ten minutes. Yeah, man, let me give my little sweetie. Pick a sweetie, I'm a favorite. You really are my favorite, right? We have to go whisper. So I have to find know when the Can't tell him, right? So even that, some of the times we are on too much haste. When we don't bathe and put lotion, we look at foot, we are hurry up. And so, you have to sit up and go down in the foot, man, my son. I call your children and say, I put lotion, mommy, food for me. I can't even give it on. Yeah, call the children. <laughs> but you can't lotion, mommy, food for you in there. You understand? I made a lotion in film. That is a self care, you know. You are spending five, look at me. I can't keep them. Oh, you can't keep them. You are spending five, look at me, man. With yourself, that is self care. How much you want to drive going on a waterfront? Just go look. Go on a waterfront free, you know? Yes. No matter going to glorious go, because this one is free. I empty. No, look so. But look out to the ocean. You know, and you look out there, just watch a plane and go down and say, I'm with me, I go to Miami. <laughs> eh? And just visualize yourself and go to customs with ease, you know, man, and go shopping and come back. Inhale, one, one, coke up full basket principle. Sometimes when you eat your lunch, get up from your desk. Get up from the, this, the, the, the common area. Go in your car, go lock up. Turn on the AC, the gas price still go go up all tomorrow. <laughs> you know, stop up tomorrow. Not shit. 
go in there, you turn on the look at AC, and you eat your lunch and belch. You understand? Don't forget the belch part, not the belch in court. Yeah. And if you do a task at work today and you feel good about it, go test you go buy a three piece. No matter what you pay price, right? Go to Casey, buy a little three piece or a barbecue zinger, and you eat it, bench and you feel good. Right? Yes. <laughs> right? That is what you have to do to reduce stress. Some of you too, in order to manage the stress, only love the I, I, I. We suffer from the eye-titis. If I alone can do it, and if I don't do it, it will never be done. And if I don't clean and I don't wash, and if I don't do this plan, it don't do it. <laughs> yes, that's why you're really unfair with the truth. None should ever disturb us from our sick three times, you know. But that is how you manage your stress. Identify your sources of stress, and then develop some strategies to manage and eliminate them. You understand? Some of us know what the stressors are, but we like the problem, you know. So we like to hold on on it because we have something to say. But you have to learn how to manage your stress. So you can do your checkpoint. Find out, think, sit with yourself a little bit and say, what stress me out? Write it down. Then, how do you know that you are stressed? Write it down. And then you're going to write a little pep talk for yourself to say whenever you're stressed, I'm going back to this pep talk, right? And that is how you manage stress. My mom tell us how not to do your work because we don't come here to look you, right? So you're going to write a little pep talk now, something where you don't want to tell yourself when you're stressed. Because when you're stressed, you don't really think straight, you know, right? The road is rocky and the hill is steep. This too shall pass. pass. Sometimes I two words, but God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I two little words, but God. You understand? Yeah? Time heals, right? So see I get some there, write them down so that you can actually go back to them, yeah? The next thing that you can do is to build strong teams. Now that part is important. We are come down to the coming down, you know. But that part is really important. Hear what I say now. Some of the time, when wellness is a problem because we surround ourselves with some people when we serve with our purpose. Right? Some of the time, we are wonder how we now get mentally well and all the stress now ease up half away and how it come like say all those stumble down from where we have no luck. The truth is we are not surrounding ourselves with people who are strong and are part of our team. So what you have to do now is make sure that you build strong teams. Now, the other part of the self, the self, the sit with self page says that you have to do an audit. Now here all the audits important, real talk. A lot of us, only for of us, right? We are there for other people, but either we're so selfish we don't want other people to be there for us, or the truth is, we really can't find somebody to be there for us whenever we have a little situation going on. You have to run an audit on your circle. Your friend circle, your work circle. Because when tragedy strikes, you must be able to say, Mama call Sue or Sam. You understand? And you can't wait till you're in there, you sit down and go through WhatsApp to say, oh, that me that tell Sheena, but she chat too much. <laughs> Would I tell him, you know, but he not have no emotion. You understand? You can build your circle from now because we all are going to go through problems. We understand? Run an audit on your circle. Yes? Make sure. And then watch all the circle work. It's not one person that will carry everything. You understand? If I have a little technical problem, I know say, all right, I will call you. If I have a little fashion crisis, I know say, I can call you. You understand? You have the different persons in your circle for different things. You understand? So that you, whenever you have an issue, you can find them. You can't wait till the problem and lick you like the dandy and the ball. You are going to say, I'm going to call, I'm going to call. No. Just like when you go places and you have emergency contact, make sure that in your circle, you know who is going to turn to, who you're going to turn to when you're having a certain crisis. You understand? You have a little spiritual crisis, 
you can call sister so and so. You understand? You know, say your mother gets some of the problem or your father gets some of the problem. Sister get others. Because the problem are with mommy, you can't call mommy. I say, mommy, you know, you have to call sister. You understand? So you have to run an audit on your circle. So those are our five points. Testing and looking at each of these for ourselves to see if we are resilient. Are we persons or am I somebody who adapts to change? Am I somebody who copes with uncertainty? Am I somebody with the ability to manage stress? Do I build strong teams and do I maintain motivation, which is the last one, maintaining motivation, right? Um, in maintaining the motivation, we have to, it, it comes back to the one one coke of full basket kind of a principle. We have to keep our eyes on the vision and have a direct connection with our personal values and missions. Sometimes we are demotivated because we have either fulfilled a particular vision and we're not set no more, or we have lost sight of the vision that we've had. And because of that, resilience now becomes a struggle for us because we are not well. But I can't bother you yeah, anything or anything. Anything well, not just so. I will kind of have this throw up hands in the air kind of mentality because we are not motivated, yes? Um, and so, in celebrating accomplishments and milestones, maintain momentum. Don't wait until, why well, when it's done, move or whatever, we will celebrate. No, if you do a big work today or a small work today, Congratulate yourself. It, one one coca full, full basket principle helps to maintain motivation. So when a big hit come at you, you would have had a lot of celebrations under your belt, a, a heavy load of motivation that can help to battle away the negativity. This will help you to also develop a growth mindset. So when the challenges come, because you're already hyped up and motivated for the day and the week and the month and where you're going, you are now able to run into the challenges without fear. You are able to do the setback as stepping stones where you have your opportunities for learning and growth. So the formula is quite simple. The formula, you have it, but you just need to execute it. Ensure that you are well as an individual, from an individualistic standpoint, right? Your, your, your areas of wellness are top-notch. If you need a little topping up in one area, you do it because if not, it's going to affect the other areas. And that is going to affect your level of resilience. In order to achieve the best of life and the best of self, you have to have that mindset where you are adaptable, you are flexible, you are motivated, you are supported by those around you so that you can um, push forward. The secret sauce to resilience, the secret sauce to resilience is most definitely wellness. So remember, healthy coping mechanisms, prioritizing self-care, setting your little boundaries, and fostering social connections. A, part, a big part of being well too as individuals is that we gotta learn to say no. We gotta learn to say no. And let me tell you, try no say. Well, a yes to somebody is a no to yourself. And I'm going to end with this. A, a yes to somebody is a no to yourself. So when you are saying yes, make sure say, you are right and comfortable with saying no to yourself. You can carry me off a tree. I'm not going to offer a tree. You can carry me off a tree. I'm going to um, what the opposite of half a tree? <laughs> Don't Don't town. Me going to town. You have got half a tree. If I say yes to you, can you take me to half a tree? And I say yes. I am taking time, gas, energy, and me could have reached home a little earlier. Me could have this, me could have do that, that kind of a vibe. Sometimes you have to say no to others because saying no is saying yes to yourself. The other little thing I want to leave with you when it comes on to prioritizing self-care and wellness towards resilience is the fact that when you are doing your, your mental wellness checks and your self-care and your prioritizing, right? You learn to say no to, um, to, 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 to persons and, and all of that. And you're trying to, to live in, you know, doing the best 
doing your best on a daily basis. What I want to say um, to you is that your mental health is important. And sometimes in the saying of the yes, we think that a free time on our calendar is an opportunity for other persons to fill it or for us to fill it. So argument sake, we you do Sunday, that's so why you come from your local church, and so, you, 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 me not, not, not do Sunday 2 to 4. Yes, you have something to do. Me have to sit down and watch Law and Order. Yes. I am doing sure. something. Yes. Me have to catch up on my Sunday nap. But true because it now, work related. You say, oh, I am free. You're not free. Sure. You understand? You, you, yes, you, I have to catch up on um, the, a series on Netflix. Then I that you can't come follow me. Go, no, me busy. Me busy, me busy, me busy. You understand? And you have to schedule those things in your time because wellness is something that is intentional and deliberate. We tend to pencil out ourselves and pencil in somebody. So like all you don't know, um, you know, say, um, we can call a meeting for when the workshop done five o'clock. Oh, we don't have nothing else for the we can have a quick meeting five to six o'clock. No. Never go go looking at my cupboard. Just look. Never read the ingredients. Sometimes you have to put the things them in there so that they get you. Yeah, man, you have to open the cupboard and read the ingredients and stand up so and look at the time that to yourself. Because if it look free on the calendar, you will put things in there and rob yourself of the time of rest. All right, so we have come to the end of Yemen. We done smart, smooth, smart, smooth. We have a line and letter fix it there. Afternoon, everyone. <laughs> All right, I'm standing here at my favorite, 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 favorite Shishin, yeah. no white. Yeah. Right, so on behalf of all your participants this afternoon, we'd like to say sincere thanks for spending time and going through that wonderful presentation with us today, helping us to understand more about ourselves, how we should cope, what are some of the steps to being resilient and also managing our own wellness. And importantly, understanding when to say no and when to say yes to ourselves, not to others, but to ourselves. So, Sashin, thank you again for today. It was a very exciting and interesting day. We love you.